Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Laura Prada from the Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news, so stay with us. And we begin in Venezuela where the President Nicolás Maduro addressed his supporters and urged them to sign a letter to promote peace. The letter condemning U.S. intervention attempts will give, be given to the U.S. government in the document. Then the Venezuelans called for their right to independence, sovereign and self-determination. Thousands have already signed on while millions more are expected to do so throughout the country. And the European Union back contact group who met, they met on Thursday in Uruguay to discuss the situation in Venezuela. They concluded that their goal is for elections to be held in Venezuela and for humanitarian aid to be allowed into the country. The group, through the co-chairs of the meeting, that is the two of us, will proceed with the necessary contacts with relevant Venezuelan actors as well as with regional and international partners with the aim of first establish the necessary guarantees for a credible electoral process within the earliest time frame possible, and second, enable the urgent delivery of assistance in accordance with international humanitarian principles. To implement these goals, the International Contact Group will send a technical mission to the country. The group will reconvene at ministerial level by the beginning of March to take stock of progress and in between we will have a senior officials meeting uh, in the next couple of weeks. In Uruguay, speaking exclusively to Telesur, the Bolivian foreign minister has stood in support of the resolution reached by the mechanism of Montevideo Group on Wednesday. He also criticized the interventionist resolution made by the European Union backed contact group earlier on Thursday. Okay, in Uruguay. Here in Uruguay, two proposals were made in regards to the situation in Venezuela. One by the mechanism of Montevideo made up by Mexico, Uruguay and CARICOM nations, and which Bolivia has added to as well, calling for an open dialogue to resolve the situation in Venezuela. The other proposal, promoted by the European Union, can be supported by Bolivia. The reason is because we can't support a proposal for elections in Venezuela. That is something that only Venezuelans must decide. That is an internal affair and Venezuelans are the ones who must resolve this political situation. And the minister also referred to Bolivia's essence on the European Union waiting to send humanitarian aid to Venezuela. There needs to be coherent action by all of countries that are taking part in this meeting. We need to work in order to help Venezuela. We can't talk about humanitarian aid, on the other hand, support the financial blockade against Venezuela. We urge all countries to stop the blockade against Venezuela so that we can discuss any type of humanitarian aid. We are sure that the economic and financial blockade against Venezuela is what is hurting the political situation in the country. And as the international summit on the political situation in Venezuela was underway, demonstrators in Montevideo rallied in support of the Venezuelan government. Protesters also came out against the European Union-backed international contact group. They called for the non-intervention of, of external forces in the domestic affairs of Venezuela. <laughs> We believe this is an imperative stance both from the United States and European countries aimed at seizing Venezuela's natural resources, while ignoring the fact that the Venezuelan people have supported Chavismo for more than 20 years now. We think that should be respected, and that Venezuelans should decide their own fate, not people from abroad who have their interests that do not align with the well-being of the Venezuelan people. And on Thursday, the Venezuelan Minister of Communication outlined evidence of an attempted cop against President Nicolás Maduro. Jorge Rodríguez said it included the participation of the United States and other governments, including Colombia. He said Venezuelan intelligence operation led to arrest and retire Colonel Oswaldo Valentín García Palomo, who wanted to enter the country to overthrow Maduro's government. García Palomo confesses that this American official told him that in the first quarter of the year 2019, was planned a military invasion against Venezuela. Forget about humanitarian aid because it's a lie. 
being the military aggression against Venezuela the real attempt on the part of Donald Trump and Marco Rubio. And in Venezuela, mobilizations in defense of national sovereignty continue in rejection to the interference plans executed by Washington against Venezuela. Thousands of citizens in the state of Aragua attended the call of the United Socialist Party of Venezuela, PESUF, with the aim of bringing a message of peace to the political sectors of the Venezuelan opposition, which seeks to generate a state of violence within the territory. During the demonstration, the first vice president of the PESUF, Diosdado Cabello, demanded that the government of Washington lift the economic and financial blockade against the country. He also described the alleged humanitarian aid to Venezuela as a mediatic show. It's a shame, appealing cynicisms, that those who don't let us buy medicines and food around the world for our people are the same who are saying that they have a humanitarian aid for 20,000 people and there is the rest of Venezuelans. They don't exist in the hypocrisy of a shelf clipping. And the governments of the United States and Colombia are trying to provide what they call humanitarian aid to the people of Venezuela, but many worry this is nothing but a trap for the Venezuelan government that will increase international pressure against the Maduro administration. Let's find out more about this situation. The Las Tienditas International Bridge in the city of Cúcuta borders Venezuela. It has been chosen as a drop-off point for the so-called humanitarian aid that the U.S. and Colombia want to deliver to Venezuela. Neither the International Committee of the Red Cross nor the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs is involved with this initiative, and far less the legitimate president of Venezuela. What must be made clear is that the aid being offered and what could be delivered cannot be used as a tool to pressure the Venezuelan government, and it can be given to just specific groups within the population. The Colombian government's refusal to hold an open dialogue with the Venezuelan government has further damaged an already fractured relationship between the two nations. We have asked for increased police and military presence, but it's not that we are preparing for battle. It is simply done to keep citizens safe, as well as Venezuelan migrants. Distorting international humanitarian law, member nations of the so-called Lima Group and their supporters have turned down any offer to hold talks with President Nicolás Maduro. It appears their goals are more political and less humanitarian. This is a complex topic, and we must focus on the different scenarios. Is there an armed conflict underway in Venezuela? There isn't one. Therefore, we can't really appeal to the rules of international humanitarian law, because these rules are to be applied in times of armed conflicts. Despite the barrage of fake news and misinformation, Colombians and Venezuelans continue moving through the border, and while there are political differences, they ask that the situation not escalate into armed conflict. There are many innocent people living here. Politicians need to fix their own problems without a war. There must be a dialogue. Where will the bombs land? They're going to send troops without any compassion. Many have called on the Lima Group to demand that the United States lift the economic blockade against Venezuela. Like if we've come to the first break here from the South, make sure you follow us on Twitter at Telesur English and my personal account at Laura P. Telesur. Stay with us.
Salvador a few days after presidential elections were held, the leaders of the country's two main parties, ARENA and FMLN, have announced changes in their leadership. The FMLN's political commission has said they accept the results of the February 3rd elections. They also announced that they are going to change their strategies and methods to confront a new political reality. We need to make changes in our leadership in order to continue being a left-wing party that is capable of fighting alongside our people to create a society with social justice, equality and freedom. The left-wing party also said that internal elections will be preponed so they can be carried out during the first six months of 2019. The party has lost almost 75 percent of voters' support when compared to the presidential elections that took place five years ago. Hoy nos corresponde... Today we must promote the participation of young generations. They are revolutionary and ethical people who will be able to carry the FMLN forward. The election results were not good for the ARENA party either. Even with an alliance with another three parties, they could not force a second round. As always, when there is a victory, there are a lot of deaths. But when there is a loss, there are a lot of orphans. In loss, there is a lot of finger pointing. Sometimes those fingers belong to people who did nothing when it was time for working hard. The next elections to choose lawmakers and mayors will take place in 2021. So the FMLN said it is urgent to restructure their internal organization. And now to Brazil where at least six people have been killed in Rio de Janeiro due to the heavy rains and flooding. The victims died after a bus was hit by a landslide. Damages were particularly strong in the southern part of the city with flooded roads and fallen trees. Local authorities have called for a state of emergency in the city. This was a preventable tragedy because authorities could have taken more precautions since heavy rains were already expected. They should have done some precautionary work, such as checking which trees were more prone to falling down, to do the necessary pruning, to unclog manholes, which hasn't happened. People should also be more aware and not throw garbage on the streets, because that also causes a lot of these problems. And people from the communities located near the Duango Dam in Colombia have condemned the destruction of the river that was their source of sustenance. Our correspondent in Colombia, Tatiana Portela, has the details. People living in communities near the Cauca River, where the Ituango Dam is located, have said the river is completely gone. They say the river is dead and no one from the government of President Ivan Duque has said or done anything about it. Before the disasters, the communities already reported the death of fish and the overall deterioration of the river. Now, fishing communities do not have a way to sustain their families and have been left without work. Electricity and water company EMP said they have to wait to release water accumulated in the dam. But communities answered that the river is already damaged. The flora and fauna are already gone. We have to remember that for eight months, people from many communities have been living in shelters due to a fissure in the Ituango Dam. The Antiquioa governor will arrive in the municipalities affected to evaluate the situation. Communities ask for the Ituango Dam to be completely closed down. Thank you, Paola. And more migrants continue to arrive to Rio Bravo, located near the border between Mexico and the United States. Around 3,000 U.S. soldiers are also deployed in the area. Around 2,000 Central American migrants have gathered in the area waiting for a, change to a chance to cross to Texas. Migrants criticize the United States migration policy and question why the U.S. administration has militarized the southern border. Don't stop us. Let us pass. We want to work, help the family, get a job. There are no jobs in our country. Let us enter so that we can get a better job. I say Trump is wrong. He doesn't have a healthy mind. We have come to look for work, but he thinks that because Mara's gang is there in Central America that we have come for this. But no, we have come to work to do our best. Don't leave a wall. It won't stop us. 
and four United States Congresswomen have called on the government to cut funding for President Donald Trump's deportation task force, ICE, and also called for the protection of migrants. This is one of the most urgent moral issues and crises that we have in America right now. Not only will we not agree to fund that, but we're here to say that an agency like ICE, which repeatedly and systematically violates human rights, does not deserve a dime. Let's make a short break. More news when we are back. back and we continue in USA where this Thursday jury entered its fourth day of deliberations in the Chap El Chapo trial. The Mexican drug lord could face life imprisonment if convicted. On Wednesday, the jurors has, had asked to reveal lengthy transcriptions of testimony of three cooperating drug dealers who testified against Guzman. Deliberations began after three months of testimony. And diplomatic relations between France and Italy have been run into difficulties. Here are more on that and other stories from around the world. France has recalled its ambassador to Rome after accusing Italy of repeated and baseless attacks against France. Tensions between the two traditional allies have not been so hostile since the end of World War II. The move comes after the Italian Deputy Prime Minister Luigi Di Maio met with Yellow Vest protesters near Paris earlier this week. Turkey has slammed France after President Emmanuel Macron announced that they would turn April 24th into the National Day for Armenian Genocide. Turkey and Armenia have long been at odds over the treatment of Armenians during World War I in which around 1.5 million people were killed, according to Armenia. But Turkey, the Ottoman Empire's successor, denies the deaths and amounted to genocide. This French decision, more precisely the decision of Macron, targets the Republic of Turkey directly. Behind this decision, there is a clear will to make Turkey a genocidal state. So that decision targets us and aims at breaking our national unity. This is why we are very angry. According to a classified document released by Reporters Without Borders, the Iranian government arrested, imprisoned and executed at least 860 journalists during the Islamic Revolution between 1979 and 2009. The organization said it obtained an official register from Iranian judicial authorities. They released the report in a conference in Paris, coinciding with the 40th anniversary of the Islamic Revolution that brought Ayatollah Khomeini to power. And Israeli forces have attacked different locations of the Palestinian movement Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Our correspondent Nayara Tardo has the details for us. Israeli forces have attacked once again the Palestinian resident movement Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Israel has justified a response to rockets launched from the Gaza Strip. Local media has also reported that neighbors have heard several explosions but no fatalities have been reported. Meanwhile, former Israeli minister Lieberman has criticized the Israeli government via Twitter, saying that it should be Twitter against Hamas. Let's recall that Lieberman resigned after failing to ensure a ceasefire between Hamas and Israel. He says that Tel Aviv should retake the policy of selective murders against Hamas. In the meantime, Gaza continues suffering a blockade in a humanitarian crisis since 2007. 
And in South Africa, there will be held its parliamentary elections on May 8th. President Cyril Ramaphosa announced the date in his annual State of the Union address on Thursday. It will be the sixth time in the country's democracy that citizens will go to the polls. The ruling African National Congress is predicted to win during his address. Ramaphosa boast, boosted of progress made tackling corruption and reviving the weak economy. I have engaged with the Independent Electoral Commission as well as our various premiers and also all in all the provinces and intend to proclaim the 8th of May 2019 as the date of the election. Syrian Arab Socialist Party, the ruling Ba'at ba Party, has expressed its full support to the legitimate government of Venezuela against the U.S. interference attempts. Guided by President Bashar al-Assad, the high members of the party also expressed their gratitude to Nicolás Maduro's government and the Venezuelan people for their support to Syria. They also say they are positive Venezuela will overcome the current situation. This central command, which is a solidarity manner, and knowing precisely what happened in Syria and what happens in Venezuela, come to express its solidarity with the people of Venezuela and receiving the instructions of the president of Syria, directly from the president Bashar al-Assad, who asked them to give unrestricted support to all the people of Venezuela and to come and express their solidarity through the embassy. And with this call for peace and no interference, we've come to the end of this brief. But you can find this and many other news on our website, terrestrialenglish.net, where you can find more stories. You can find also opinion articles and, of course, a special interviews among other special coverage. Continue with Telesur, connecting the global south. Until next time, thank you for watching.